Hello and welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Ashley Collingsworth. Thank you for joining us. We begin today's news with a follow-up story we led with on LMU Community TV News Weekend Edition. The man accused of kidnapping a nine-year-old girl launching a statewide Amber Alert appeared in court Monday morning. A Hawkins County judge set Gary Simpson's preliminary hearing for next Monday, May 23rd. Simpson is accused of picking up Carly Trent from school under false pretenses and is charged with especially aggravated kidnapping and custodial interference. He is currently being held on a $1 million bond and was appointed a public defender in the case. The judge said Simpson must remain 1,000 feet away from Trent. Specially trained investigators have already interviewed Trent and if the investigation goes to trial, it is possible Trent would have to testify against her alleged kidnapper. If Simpson is convicted of the specially aggravated kidnapping and custodial interference charges, he would likely serve 15 to 25 years in prison. Meanwhile, Carly Trent was all smiles when she said hello and thanked the four men who helped rescue her at a homecoming party held for her on Saturday afternoon in Rogersville. She, alongside her sister, father, and a few other family members, shook the hands of Roger Carpenter, Stuart Franklin, Donnie Lawson, and Larry Hamlin. Carly gave them hugs and even brought one of them to tears. Roger Carpenter was one of the men who searched for Carly day after day until Thursday evening when Carly was found safe. Carly enjoyed playing with her friends, getting her face painted, playing cornhole and jumping on bouncy toys. While the Trent family's life may never be the same, what won't change is how much the community of Rogersville cares about Carly. Her father, James, said it's great to see her being a normal kid again. Tex Turner Arena was filled Saturday as the class of 2016 of Lincoln Memorial University DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine celebrated its commencement. The ceremony began at 10 o'clock with Sister Ann Brooks, Medical Director and Chief Administrator of the Tutwiler Clinic, serving as commencement speaker. LMU DCOM opened its doors in 2007 with the full complement of classes and a current student body of more than 600 students. LMU DCOM has the largest medical student enrollment in the state of Tennessee. In March 2016, LMU DCOM was ranked number two by U.S. News and World Report in medical schools that produce the highest percentage of primary care residents. The majority of osteopathic physicians have historically entered into a primary care field upon graduation. Approximately 82% of the members of the graduating class will enter their first year of residency training in a primary care. The members of the class of 2016 will be, 120, will be in 121 different residency programs in 30 states. The J. Frank White Academy held their commencement exercises for the class of 2016 this past Saturday in the Sam and Sue Mars Performing Arts Center inside Duke Hall of Citizenship right here on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University. Eleven students picked up high school diplomas during the ceremony. The class of 2016 continues JFWA's record of 100% college placement. Eva Dunn and Frank Yao earned valedictorian and salutatorian honors, respectively. International speaker, coach, and trainer Sherry Strong was the guest speaker at the ceremony. Dunn delivered the commencement address and Yao gave a salutatorian speech. The J. Frank White Academy is a private co-educational college preparatory school. It serves students grades 5 through 12 from Claiborne, Union, Campbell, and Hancock counties in Tennessee, Bell County, and Lee County. For more information on J. J. Frank White Academy, you can contact the Academy's office at 869-6234 or visit www.lmunet.edu slash academy. A pilot program within Lincoln Memorial University is being launched in July that will allow pets in two of its residence halls. The program will span two academic years and will allow graduate and professional students who reside in Mars Hall and Lee Hall to keep one pet per student. The pets are limited to dogs under 80 pounds, cats and small pets that include rabbits, fish, small birds, ferrets, chinchillas, 
rats, hedgehogs, hamsters, sugar gliders, gerbils, guinea pigs, iguanas, and bearded dragons. Mars Hall and Lee Hall are located five minutes from LMU's main campus in the town of Cumberland Gap, adjacent to University Inn Apartments. Each suite can house up to three students with a limit of three pets per suite. Residents participating in the program will pay a registration fee of $150, which covers a veterinary assessment during the registration process, an LMU pet ID tag, and flea treatment for the buildings. Additionally, LMU will be providing a fenced-in area for pets to play off of their leashes. Pets are expected to be on a leash in other areas outdoor on campus or around the residence halls. LMU will become the first university in the state of Tennessee with pet-friendly housing, while some colleges and universities across the country allow fish and other small animals in their residence halls. Very few have housing dedicated to students with animals. In the upcoming weeks, LMU Community TV will be airing a special interview with President B. James Dawson, recapping all the activities and events held on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University in the 2015-2016 academic year. Taking us to break, here is a preview of that interview and what you can expect. Well, imagine, if you will, uh, beginning at the golf driving range, mm -hmm. and we have the new golf facility there. Driving down that road, you see a new facility being constructed that will be an indoor tennis facility. Mm -hmm. Six tennis courts, uh, and it'll be in an enclosed area so you can play year-round, and it will be a very impressive facility with mezzanines for viewing, and uh, second to none in this region, mm -hmm. an indoor tennis facility. Uh, going past that, you will have a baseball field and a softball field. Now people are saying, well, we have a baseball field and a softball field. No doubt about that, but we're moving them because the current baseball field and softball field are right in the center of campus now. That area that is the current baseball and softball area will become an alumni park for us. So it will be green space for the campus, really improve the appearance of campus. Uh, and as you know, ultimately we plan to build the boulevard uh, out from the tennis courts, the old tennis courts, mm -hmm. uh, to the entrance of campus, and that will be uh, right through the heart of the current softball field and baseball field. So we'll have softball, baseball, tennis. We will construct a facility that will house three courts a men's basketball, a women's basketball, and an intramural court. Uh, but the facility will be used as a multi-purpose facility and we'll have lots of opportunity for intramural sports there. Of course, we have the lacrosse field that is in the center of the park with a new lacrosse field house being built. And we will have the opportunity for uh, expansion of our athletic programs with some practice fields and we will move the track and field for our collegiate competition to that area as well. As you know, we had planned to put the track and field at, by the entrance of campus. Mm -hmm. uh, that will become a facility for our high school, or well, actually for the charter school that we're planning. And uh, so we'll move the track and field down to the Valley of Sports as well. So from the current uh, golf driving range all the way through to the end of the park and beyond will be athletic facilities, thus the Valley of Sports. College, it can seem a million miles away. But what if you could get help with your tuition expenses? Get help filling out all those applications and finding a major that fits. All of a sudden, the impossible becomes possible. Visit collegefortn.org today. College, you can get there from here. I already knew that I was gonna go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely wanna major in political science. After that, I'm gonna get my law degree. Then I'm gonna come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. 
I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined. It's, it, it's gonna happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Welcome back. In 2010, the LMU Organic Gardening Project was organized on the main campus of LMU. It was created to give the community a place to learn about organic gardening and aims to provide families who may not have access to land or other resources a chance to grow healthy, cost-effective organic produce. The LMU Organic Garden Facilities are located on the south side of the campus adjacent to LMU DCOM near the roundabout. The garden includes two greenhouses and is split into two sections. The adult garden consists of 75 raised beds and three-fourths of an acre community garden. The adult section includes three wheelchair accessible raised beds. The second is the children's garden which consists of 25 raised beds and one-fourth acre community garden. Additionally, there is one-fourth acre produce market garden which is used to teach young adults successful market skills. Garden members have the opportunity to grow their own food in individual beds. Additionally, they have access to classroom and kitchen access to attend weekly meetings each Monday, which often includes guest speakers. Classes are offered for planting and soil preparation, canning, and healthy eating. Produce is shared with local families and community food banks. The LMU Organic Garden is managed by Bill Clayton and Sue Granger. For more information on the organization, you can call Bill Clayton at 423-441-9133. Arts in the Gap is the celebration of the fine applied and visionary arts, process, practice, presentation, and shared appreciation are the common objectives as they develop this arts initiative. Any artist, beginner or intermediate or even advanced is appreciated, encouraged, and challenged. It is their hope that Arts in the Gap becomes an annual destination for passionate and aspiring artists from the region and beyond where you may explore your creativity in the beautiful and inspiring environment of Cumberland Gap. Summer workshops are just around the corner and a few of those include Playwright, Intensive, Intensive Mountain Heritage Literary Festival, Cumberland Gap Writer Studio, Appalachian Young Writers Workshop, and Acoustic Music Week, among many more. If you have questions, you can email Darnell, Darnell Arnault at darnell.arnault at lmunet.edu or call 423-869-7085. A Speedwell veteran's sacrifice is inspiring hundreds across the nation to give back. More than 800 volunteers are helping to build a 3,800 square foot forever home for Cody Evans who lost his legs in Afghanistan. Once the house is completed, Cody will receive the keys to his forever home. In 2011, Evans served in Afghanistan as a combat engineer with the primary role involving using metal detectors to locate explosive devices on the ground. It was only five months in before everything changed. Lance Corporal Evans came into contact with an improvised explosive device. After fighting for his life, Cody did come home, but readjusting to his mother's home as a his mother's home as a double amputee had its obstacles. With the help of A Soldier's Journey Home, the nonprofit organization known for building disabled friendly homes for returning soldiers who have been traumatically injured in the line of duty, Cody will now have a home to call his own. Mike Fitzpatrick, the president of A Soldier's Journey Home, is leading the house building project. He said the home will be fully handicapped accessible. 
Many of the workers are firefighters and veterans themselves, but all are volunteers taking off work for a man whose spirit never crumbled. Evan said that he cannot thank everyone involved enough. To find out more about A Soldier's Journey Home, you can visit the organization's Facebook page or their website, asoldiersjourneyhome.org. Faculty, staff, and members of the Bell County Chamber of Commerce were on hand Wednesday afternoon as Southeast Community College broke ground on what will become a state-of-the-art facility. The building will be called the Middlesboro Education Alliance Building. Here to tell more about the project is Dr. Jay Box. I want to thank you all, first of all, for being here as we move those first shovels of dirt to begin the Middlesboro Education Alliance Building. Raising money for this project has been a labor of love for Dr. Moore and all of her staff. You know, many of you know that this is a part of a larger statewide initiative called the Build Smart Investment for Kentucky Competitiveness. Build Smart is a public-private partnership that provides funding for the top capital project at each of our 16 KCTCS colleges. In this case, the private match was $2.5 million, which is a large number in this small community. We all know that education is the key to a better life for our students and a better economy for this area. We also know the importance of Southeast Kentucky Community and Technical College throughout this region. It provides the opportunity for people to complete college and fulfill their dreams while staying close to home. The new building we're celebrating today will provide special laboratories for nursing and CNA, both of which will be moved here from the building in Pineville. It also will have space for computer laboratories tailored to meet the needs of the nursing and general education classes, as well as general purpose classrooms. Space also is planned for an aviation simulator. This building will provide our students the very best in technology, equipment, and facilities, and at an affordable, close, an affordable cost close to home. Whatever our students choose to do, we're happy to be a part of helping them fulfill their educational dreams. Thank you very much. Southeast Community College is very proud to begin the work on the building and the many opportunities that it will bring to the Tri-State community. To learn more, you can visit their website at southeast.kctcs.edu. Now keep it right here on LMU Community TV News as Adam Haley brings you the very latest in the world of sports from around the campus and the region. This is why you get by on four hours sleep. Why you took a second job. This is why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. And spend hours juggling the bills. This is why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Now more options are available. Call 888-995-HOPE to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert today. from the creative galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think outside the box. We'll never get older. Each one Go of our be amazing. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. 
Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Welcome back. Even though the LMU athletic seasons are over, the coaching staffs will still be busy this summer with individual and team camps. The first LMU camp will be held June the 4th by the women's basketball team. The first session of their elite camp will be held June 4th through the 5th and cost $150 for commuters and $200 for persons who would like to stay overnight. The overnight guest will get to stay in the apartment style dorms and the price includes breakfast, lunch and dinner. You must be registered by May 30th to be involved. The baseball coaching staff will also have their unsigned instructional showcase that week on June 7th. It is for unsigned high school players graduating 2019 or earlier or any junior college players that are eligible to transfer to a four-year institution. The cost is $75 in advance or $95 a day of the event. Schools attending the event will include LMU, Carson Newman, Tusculum, Lee University, Maryville College, Union College, Hiawassee College, Walter State, Cleveland State, Roan State, and Bryan College. We'll continue to update you on the upcoming camps throughout the summer, and you can find a full list at lmurailsplitters.com. Go to the Fan Central page and click Camps for Brochures and information on how to register. The Sprint Cup Series was in Dover, Delaware this past weekend for the AAA 400 Drive for Autism. Kevin Harvick got the start on the pole and led early on for 117 laps before getting caught up in a wreck and finished in 17th place. The wreck that Harvick got caught up into happened with 46 laps to go when Jimmy Johnson could not get his car going on a restart and it took out Eric Almarola, Kyle Busch, Greg Biffle, Carl Edwards, and Dale Hart Jr., just to name a few. The race came down to Matt Kenseth, Kyle Larson, and rookie Chase Elliott. Larson went nose-to-nose -nose with Kenseth while Elliott was on their bumper for a few laps, but in the end it was Kenseth who picked up his first win of the season by under two-tenths of a second. Larson took second, followed by Elliott, Casey Kane, and Kurt Busch. Kenseth now joins Kyle Busch, Edwards, Johnson, Brad Keselowski, Harvick and Denny Hamlin as drivers who have punched their ticket for the chase. The Sprint Cup Series will now move to Charlotte, North Carolina next week for the Sprint All-Star Race. The Tennessee Smokies are in the middle of a 10-game homestand that started this past Saturday with the Birmingham Barons. The Smokies lost Saturday 11-1 but rebounded with a 12-4 win on Sunday to split the weekend. They'll continue their series with Birmingham until Wednesday before setting their sights on the Biloxi Shuckers. For more information, tickets, results, or game promotions, check out the Smokies online at SmokiesBaseball.com. Now that's all for sports, but stay tuned after the break as Joseph Lewis will let us know if Captain America's Civil War could make it two in a row this past weekend when he brings you the box office report here on LMU Community TV News. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's <laughs> life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. calls me googly eyes. You know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. Our whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. 
It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Hello, I'm Joseph Lewis bringing you all the latest information in the world of movies. Tops at the box office this weekend were led once again by Captain America's Civil War, Marvel's long-awaited Clash of the Titans adding $72 million onto its now $295 million domestic gross. In the U.S., its second weekend take stands as one of the top ten of all time, joining the ranks with financial juggernauts including Star Wars The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, and the two Avengers films, while its worldwide total has quickly skyrocketed to $940 million, meaning that after just over two weeks of international release, the film has made more money than Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice did during its entire theatrical run, and is on the fast track to becoming one of the year's biggest and most indisputable box office successes. Civil War has also been greeted by enthusiastic reviews from critics, its Rotten Tomatoes score currently sitting at 90%. Following at number two was Disney's latest live-action adaptation of The Jungle Book, adding $17 million onto its now $311 million domestic gross, thanks to its broad appeal as well as universal raves from critics and audiences alike for its endearing story and its immersive use of special effects. Director Jon Favreau is no stranger to box office success, his light but earnest touch previously having led movies including Elf and Iron Man to grossing several hundred million worldwide, and The Jungle Book is already following suit, its worldwide total sitting at $828 million. And rounding out the top three was newcomer Money Monster, the Jodie Foster-directed thriller taking $15 million in its opening weekend, undoubtedly in part because of the star power of George Clooney and Julia Roberts at its center. For the most part, Money Monster has been given mixed notices from critics and viewers, with many saying that its cast elevates an otherwise half-baked story and that its pointed commentary on America's economic crisis arrives 10 to 15 years too late. Following at number four on the chart was the Kevin Bacon-led horror film The Darkness, pulling just over $5 million for the three days. However, considering the fact that the darkness comes courtesy of Jason Blum's Blumhouse Productions, a company which imposes a $5 million budget limit on all of its features, it can be assumed that the film has already broken even financially. Quickly falling off post-holiday was Mother's Day in the number 5 slot, adding $3 million onto its now $28 million domestic gross. Despite a cast of A-listers including Jennifer Aniston and Money Monster's Julia Roberts, the film itself has been met with abysmal critical response, with many reviews echoing the indelible sentiment laid down by Adam Graham of the Detroit News. Mother's Day is not a tribute to mothers, it's an insult to everyone. Overall, the film has grossed $28 million in total. The rest of the weekend's top ten finds Zootopia, The Huntsman Winter's War, Keanu, Barbershop The Next Cut, and The Boss all taking less than $3 million each, while the story in limited release this week was Sing Street, the latest musical drama from Once and Begin Again filmmaker John Carney taking 636,000 from 525 screens. Although Disney continues to dominate the charts with Captain America and The Jungle Book this week, Things may be shaken up next weekend, which sees the release of Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, Shane Black's Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling starring detective comedy The Nice Guys, and, for better or worse, the Angry Birds movie. That's all for today in the world of movies. I'm Joseph Lewis. And that is going to do it for this week's LMU Community TV News. I'm Adam Haley. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again on Thursday. For everyone here at LMU Community TV, I'm Ashley Collingsworth. Have a great week.